Hey friends, today is a good day. And it's a good day because I have lots of friends. Lots of friends that I've actually never met before. Of course, I'm talking about internet friends. I think we all have them. My journey with internet friends started way back in the late 1990s, early 2000s, when my brother and I joined a motorcycle forum called the Shadow Riders Forum. These were all folks that rode a Honda Shadow motorcycle and got together online to talk about their bikes and well, just about anything else under the sun. There were a lot of interesting personalities on that forum and they were so interesting I thought, you know, I'd really like to meet these people one day in person. So back then I used to go by the name Mr. Soup and once a year, starting in the year 2000, I held something called the Soup Run. It was basically an opportunity for me to invite total strangers over to my house that I've only met on the internet. I'd serve them big batches of soup, grill up some brats and burgers, and have a whole afternoon of just socializing and having fun. Over the course of 10 years that I held the soup run, I've had hundreds of people show up to my little place here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, from all around the country and actually from Canada. Those are really good times, but maybe I'll do another video someday to tell you all about the soup run and what I used to make and who used to show up to these big parties. Now fast forward about 15 years and we're in a total different era of internet. We have Facebook, we have Discord, we have all sorts of forums where people from all around the world can get together and talk about their favorite subject. I'm actually members of forums that talk about travel, talk about drumming, talk about cooking. On one of those computer forums or Facebook groups, I met a gentleman by the name of Ken. Ken is actually the guy that made this cutting board for me. Him and his wife Helen live out there on the East Coast somewhere and they have five kids. Five kids ranging in age from three to 12. That's pretty amazing. But what's more amazing is every one of them have some sort of special dietary restriction. They were actually watching one of my videos that I made. I think it was the bean soup recipe and saying how much they thought it looked good, but none of them could eat it. Well, that made me feel a little sad, so I wrote to Ken and asked if he could send me a recipe of something they like to eat and I would try to make it on my channel. So that's what I'm gonna do. Ken sent me one of his recipes. I'm gonna make it, but I might tweak it a little bit and we're gonna see how it turns out. So to Lily, Eliza, Kenny, Ellie, and little Evelyn, this video is for you. Hope you enjoy it. Ken calls this dish his one pot noodle dish. Everybody in the family seems to like it. I'm gonna do a little variation on what he does. I'm actually gonna have more than one pot and probably bake it in the oven. But all the ingredients are the same. Well, I found out shopping for people with special dietary needs can be kind of an expensive undertaking. Patty and I, when we go shopping, we pretty much pick whatever we want. Folks with allergies really have to be careful. So. The ground beef I'm using is going to have no antibiotics or growth hormones in it, have all organic vegetables. The cheese we're using is actually from cows not treated with any hormones. This is the same brand that Ken uses. And the pasta is made with brown rice. All the seasonings we're using are USDA organic. And the Parmesan cheese we're using was made from cow's milk that doesn't have any growth hormones in it. The major change I'm making from Ken's recipe is that I'm not going to be doing this just in one pot cooking everything together. I'm actually going to be cooking the pasta ahead of time and then combining that with the meat, mushrooms, and crushed tomatoes. The other big change is he's cooking for seven people. We only have two here, so I'm going to be cutting back on some of the ingredients a little bit. My water's up to a boil. I'm going to be putting half of this bag in. And according to the bag instructions, we're going to let this cook for two minutes. All right, two minutes are up. Instructions tell us to turn off the stove and cover it. and Just let it sit there for about 17 minutes. I've never made pasta like this before, but we are going to do what they tell us to do. Okay, while that pasta is finishing cooking up there, we're going to chop up some mushrooms. I'm just going to chop them up 
in any random pattern, but not have any big, gigantic pieces. I think that should be enough. Now I'm going to brown this grass-fed beef and throw the mushrooms in there after this starts cooking for a bit. Okay, that's looking really good. I think it's time to add some of these mushrooms. And also a little bit of bell pepper that I chopped up. Time to season a little bit. I have some salt here. I also have some fresh ground pepper. I guess Kenny Jr. likes pepper, so we'll put a lot of pepper in there for him. I'm not sure how the family does with a little bit of spice, but I have some organic chili powder here I thought I would sprinkle in just for a little heat. I found some organic crushed tomatoes, fire roasted, so that's what I'm going to be adding to this. And to top it off, a little organic basil. Time to combine this with the pasta. Have the pasta all cooked up. And then the beef sauce. This is where I'm varying a little bit from uh, Ken's recipe. I'm going to be putting in some sharp cheddar cheese right into this mixture and we're going to bake it. I believe some of the kids might have some allergies to cheese so they don't put cheese in right away. But we'll put some cheese in there. And now I'm going to put this in a casserole dish to bake. I'm going to top this with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Who am I kidding? A lot of Parmesan cheese. All right, we're going to put this in a 350 degree oven. Not real long, just long enough to get the cheese melted a little bit. Okay, as you can see, it's really hot. We're going to wait just a little bit before we try serving this up. Time for our taste test. Let's see how well I screwed up Ken's recipe. It's not bad. Mm. It's very mild. There's not a lot of seasonings in here, but the tomato is cutting through there a bit. A little bit of salt on that beef and the cheese adds a lot to it. I guess if I had to find a word to describe the flavor, I guess I would say it's clean. No one flavor is overpowering another. And the texture is pretty darn good. Now, if I do this over, I would definitely cook that pasta a lot less to give it more of a, more of a tooth feel to it. Ken says he uses this basic recipe as sort of a base for other things. That's what I did here. I made sort of a, a pasta casserole dish. And you know what? I'm liking it. Ken and Helen and all those folks out there that deal with family food allergies, I feel for you. It's got to be rough. You just can't go out and grab a burger or order a pizza or a bucket of chicken. You got to be careful with what you order. And grocery shopping, you're reading labels all the time and paying a premium for it. Well, I had a really good day. I learned a lot about food allergies and what to watch out for. Now I realize this is not a solution for everybody. Individuals have their own allergies and their own food sensitivities. I can't give you advice on anything related to that. Please don't take this as an educational video on how to eat safe. So to little Evelyn, Ellie, Kenny Jr., Eliza, and Lily, Thanks so much for giving me the inspiration for this video. I really liked it, and hey, thank your dad for me for sending it to me. Well, as usual, I'm having a really good day. I hope whatever you're doing, you're having a good day. See you next time.